So hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's trading spotlight webinar with a very, 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 very fascinating, very important topic. Why serious paper trading is as important as life trading. Uh, my name is Jens. Um, I'm a professional trader and I'm also here today to guide you through this um, um, very interesting, very important topic, in fact, on trading together with admirals here and um, so to to give you to give you already some some uh, some ideas of what we want to talk about today, um, it's uh, first of all the question what trading is about. Um, but especially here from a um, um, from a from a um, not money making perspective, but looking at it from uh, what's going on behind the scenes. Let's put it that way. Um, in this context, we want to have a look at our trading brain. We want to, um, or I especially, want to give you my uh, take on the best book I've ever read on trading, and uh, you will be, um, yeah, we'll be kind of surprised. I'm, I'm, uh, I think so, um, because the book itself, once you look at it, does not necessarily have um, something to do with trading. And once you're through the book, and once you've read it, you will find out it has everything to do with trading. In fact. And um, in this context, the book also is talking about something we refer to as system one, system two. And uh, here there's a conflict between these two systems. And I want to give you some ideas on uh, the solution. Um, and uh, yeah, then at the end, I will give you another book example, or not a book, book um, um, I, I will refer another book here uh, on, on trading and um, and here in this context, then closing the cycle of uh, why you have to take demo trading really seriously. And um, so that's it um, in regards to the introduction. Just want to let you know, um, please feel free to subscribe once you visit now uh, here the recording on YouTube. Um, once watching the, the recording, uh, please feel free to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel from Admirals. Um, leave a comment here. Um, in the chat box below, any questions, um, I'm more than happy to get questions and answer them. And um, if you like what you will witness within the, uh, let's say, next 40, 45 minutes around, then please also leave a thumb up here. And um, yeah, so that's it here in regards to the introduction. Now, let me share my screen here with um, the first slide. So that's something I already talked about, why serious paper trading is as important as serious live trading. And um, now what we want to do is um, we want to, first of all, go here through um, Admirals and the current rebranding taking place. You've seen it. I'm, I'm really sure uh, it's not the first webinar you're um, uh, here joining from Admirals. But um, probably for those of you who are completely new, by the way, hello, welcome you. Um, and um, Admirals uh, is already in the financial industry now for 20 years and decided to uh, go, when it comes to financial services, um, beyond what was offered here for um, yeah quite a while, 19 years, something like that. So Admirals established itself as a, a true expert on FX and CBD trading. And um, here in Germany, we refer to Admirals as the DAX expert. Um, so when it comes to DAX trading, especially CBD trading, I'm at least um, not aware of any more competitive offering out there. Um, so this alone um, gives you a good reason to, to join Admirals and uh, check their offering at admirals.com. But beside of that, they decided to um, add further financial services and products to their current offering, continue to um, offer more and more and more. And in this context, especially here, Right now, um, you can get access to an Admiral's Visa, uh, yeah, Visa card, so credit card. Um, just to give you give you one example, in which direction here, um, uh, this yeah, true multi asset broker um, points. It's not just that it's uh, interesting for traders, also for investors, longer term investors, physical stocks are tradable via the invest solution. So to make long thing short, invest um, uh, your time wisely when choosing your broker. And in this context, check out admirals.com for further information. Um, I think you'll be more than happy what you'll find there. For further information, check out not just the website, but also contact admirals directly. And um, so now we want to go through today's agenda, today's topic, 
um, here and uh, what trading is about. As I already pointed out, we want to have a look at our trading brain. We want to give you the best book on trading. I'd recommend, in fact, um, I recommend any student. Um, um, every student who comes to me, I tell him, you have to read this book first. Um, I've read it plenty of times. Um, I have the German version um, in my bookshelf, so I could now show it to you here right into this camera, but it doesn't really matter. Um, um, so it's a German topic. You will, you will get the English version from this. Um, it's from a Nobel Prize winner. So it's not any um, or some some guy who just wrote some some nice thoughts together, but really a Nobel Prize winner. And uh, here in this context, system one, system two becomes uh, comes into play. What's the difference between those two, and what's the solution to overcome any um, differences between these two? This is also part of this presentation. And then at the end, I want to give you, I want to close the cycle. I want to show you um, how to turn um, a routine you may have into a habit. And um, and this context becomes very clear in why demo trading, where everything starts once you start out to trade the markets, why you have to take it really seriously because everything else um, you already turned into a habit uh, during your demo career uh, will potentially be there once you start trading live. And this is something to, to take into account. But um, so first of all, we want to start out with this question. What is trading about? I mean, well, no question. Simply put, we want to make money trading the markets, yeah, right? That's that's what we want to do. And that this is what trading is about. I know why you say that. And uh, it's not that it's um, in, my, in, in my world differently. So when I trade, I want to make money. No question about that. But I'm still, I think it's important to, um, to see that there is way more than just, just making money in this context. Um, and it's very difficult to explain this to someone out, um, um, out, out of the world of trading, in fact. So if someone um, is asking me, um, hey, what, what are you doing for a living? And I tell them, hey, I'm a professional trader. Um, it's like they, they look at me, ah, you're that Gordon Gecko kind of guy. This, uh, this greed is good. This um, all, Everything is about money. Well, what's very interesting is the longer you're um, trading the markets, the longer you're... Um, um, trying to make um, ends meet with your trading, uh, the more you, you um, come to the conclusion that trading is so much more than just making money. And you learn so much more about you. It's about improving um, um, and, and getting better, not just as a trader. Um, this is a natural consequence out of becoming a better human being. That sounds at first, at first glance, it sounds a little too much, but uh, believe me, the longer you are in the markets, the longer you trade, the more you will find out that this is exactly um, what is trading about. It's um, it's a mirror, the mirror of life. It's a true mirror. It's not a false friend or something like that, but it just gives you direct feedback on who you are and where you have um, uh, strengths, but also where you have weaknesses. And uh, your target is at the end of the day to overcome these weaknesses. And um, so... But still, what is trading about? So we certainly want to make money every day, as I already pointed out. No question about that. But the thing is that our day-to-day -day job, our day-to-day -day business we do consists of thinking about what do I want to go long? What asset is a potential short candidate? Okay, so I, by, by the way, so we're looking now um, at the upcoming US equity market opening, I already have my game plan written together. So um, I usually have to, 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 to let some time pass the, the um, volatile market opening is not of, of my interest right now. Um, but I want to see where the first impulse um, goes, if it's going long or the short direction, I certainly have an overall BS in the current market environment. And um, so I already thought about this, what I want to go long today, what I want to go short, <laughs> give you a name directly. So long candidate for today is Pluck, Pluck Power. Um, short candidate is Disney after uh, yesterday's earnings. And um, then the question is now, the second one I, I have to answer here in terms of or during my preparation, it's where do I get the most attractive risk reward for my trades? Um, and so I have these two, I filtered these two already out, and I can already say that um, right here, here, right, that screen on this side, um, I have plug open, um, and I, I have already um, um, one eye here on the screen. And um, now you might wonder, hey, why, why plug? Why not Disney? I mean, if you if you looked at Disney too, why plug first? Because I think that the risk word in plug is better. It's more attractive, and the overall market environment is currently it's probably more attractive. And um, so. So that being said, 
a, a true example from today's trading and the upcoming US market opening. Um, that being said, um, our daily trading, as you can see, is mainly about making the right decisions. So as of now, I don't know whether it was the right decision or not. And there are times once I'm um, not right about my, my stock selection in this context, for example. So I don't know whether whether Pluck is really such a great candidate risk reward wise. I don't really know whether uh, we really get to see um, a bullish um, 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 environment or if, if we get to see the, the, the bullish um, um, picture, um, which, which I could imagine to play out now after the news hit the wire that they um, um, came came um, over uh, or overcame that way around and overcame their, their uh, financial statement problems that these were solved. Um, and the stock has massively lost um, um, value over the last um, 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 weeks and months, in fact. So just look at the chart, but this is not what we want to look at. So what I have now um, done here is in fact, I took a decision. I, I, I made hopefully a right decision in this context. And um, so what I am here, is um, um, now becoming obvious. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here giving a webinar right now. Um, I know that the market opening will take place in around 15 minutes from now, but still I'm, I'm really relaxed. So I'm, I'm sitting here, there's no such thing as really feeling pressure or stress right now or having to check the screen every second. Um, but it's just like, um, I, I, I already know my daily routine, which I went through and the question I um, um, came across every time, every single time, over and over again, every trading day was, how can I make better decisions, more effective decisions, um, which are then pointing in one clear direction that I can continue to grow my trading account? How can I make money, the markets, with my decision thinking, uh, decision making process? And uh, so this in context is um, here, uh, the answer, the answer to this question, how can um, we make better decisions in our trading, which obviously trading is about trading here, what is trading about? It's about decision making. It's uh, the, the, the money which results out of the right decisions is a side product. First of all, it's about making the right decisions, picking the right stock. In my case now, hopefully it is block. I don't know. Well, but if I do this open uh, often enough, you will find, or I will find out that um, my right decisions here will result in a rising equity curve. And uh, so what, what this then um, um, shows is that the better our decisions become, so what I did more and more, then the better my trading will get. And so the answer to this question, how I can make better decisions is I should focus really on the process and not the result. As you now found out, uh, I mean, I mentioned that several times, I don't know. I don't know if it's most the right choice. I don't know if the stock will now see a bullish drive today, whatever. I just don't know. I, I will see it at the, at the end of the day. Um, but I think given my overall process so far, my experience and looking at my trading account and, and what my decision resulted in so far, I think it was the right decision. Or it is at least there's an, um, let's say, higher probability that it will work out than it won't work out. And uh, that being said, it points already in one direction that, I mean, at the end of the day, I could have lost money with this decision, we will see. Um, but obviously, I'm not focused on the result. But so far, I'm really, I'm well prepared. I did everything I could so far. So I checked my, my, my watch list. I checked um, what is of interest given my strengths, my personal strengths. And given that knowledge about myself, I decided to say, okay, this is the stock to watch today, where these are the stocks. So it's not just plug, but it's also Disney. And I will also check the, the stock here. I have also a game plan for Disney, but still my main focus is on plug, in fact. And um, this is then something where you can see what trading is about. It's about making the right decisions. And at the end of the day, really focus on the process and not the results. So even if the result is negative, doesn't necessarily mean you had a bad trading day. It could have been, well, as we will see, it's probably, um, um, there's, there's, a, there's a good chance that probably it has been a very good day, which is, by the way, also one of our, um, one, one of the reasons why people look at me kind of, let's say, irritated. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I talk about good losses um, or I'm, I'm, I'm happy about a loss. Let's put it that way. So people look at me and just think, what are you talking about? How, how can someone be happy about a loss? How can someone be happy about losing money? Um, yeah, it's because the result itself doesn't matter. 
it's the process. And if the process uh, points into the right direction, then the money is just secondary. I mean, certainly if, if, if in addition to my good um, um, and, and positive um, 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 thinking, respectively, the right decisions I took and, and, and focusing on the process, in addition to that, um, there is um, a money being added to my overall account balance. Great. I mean, this is a plus, but it's not a, a must necessarily to become a better trader. And um, so that brings us now to the next slide here in this context, the look at our trading brain. Um, unfortunately, this is a little unfortunate, but um, yeah. Um, so as you may have um, heard about, or let, one second, by the way, let me just check here the, okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so I agree and so true, uh, that, that, that's great. Thank you. Um, so a look at our trading brain. That's what we want to do now. Um, probably some of you have um, studied the human brain already, probably because you, you read a book on, on psychology in general, book on or, um, 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 especially focusing on trading psychology. But um, what you may have um, read there is that our brain consists of three parts. Um, the first is the reptilian then there's the limbic brain, and then there's the so-called neocortex. Um, so the reptilian part, this is the instinct, instincts and, and, and automatic reactions, like breathing, for example. So you don't need to think about breathing. It's, it's just natural. Um, this is due to the reptilian uh, part of your brain. Then there's the uh, limbic part. The limbic part is uh, responsible, let's put it simply, for the emotions and feelings. Um, and then we have the neocortex. The neocortex is the uh, rational part, let's say, of the brain. So it's um, reason and cognition. This, this is the way or we could put it differently here. As you can see, as traders, we want to make decisions here solely. We don't want to feel something kind of um, fear of clicking the button. We don't want to, to rely, rely on our instincts to some extent. Um, we just want to have a rational reasoning here and just say, I click the button now based on as a computer, they, well, like, like a robot, right? So, so you wanna, this is one of the reasons uh, because we are trading with some um, expert advisor, for example, and try to automate our trading as much as possible. The thing is, I just finished a book um, from uh, Denise Scholl. It's um, 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 Market Mind Games. Yes, I think it's, more, it's more Market Mind Games. Um, it's a great book. I highly recommend it. And uh, she's really focusing on emotions and feelings here. And obviously then on this part of limbic. And uh, the thing is that I, I have to admit, I disagree with people saying you have to get rid of your emotions and your trading. Emotions are not just part of our being as human beings. I mean, we are no emotional um, um, Per, per, per definition. But in addition to that, it's um, that emotions and feelings sometimes like the gut feeling, for example, or fearing in, in this case to click the button because just something doesn't feel right. That the system itself, um, the, 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 the um, um, rules for your overall setup are all given, but still it just doesn't feel like you should click the button. Something just doesn't feel right. Um, and, and these feelings um, can make really the difference between being successful as a trader and profitable and not profitable. And it's, um, 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 it's, a, matter, it's a fact that I've met plenty of professional profitable traders. It's not many, but those of, um, 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 those of these professional prof profitable traders I met during my career so far all had this so-called gut feeling. It wasn't really a gut feeling, it was more like um, experience. And based on that, they, they, they took decisions um, 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 instinctively, let's say, but um, they relied on their feelings. And there was the big difference between those guys just clicking the button, trying to be as rational as possible. And those saying, hey, this just, I've never seen that before. Or when I've seen that, usually that doesn't work for whatever reason. I just have this feeling. And then you just skip the trade. The, the professional, the profitable trader skips the trade. The other probably takes it and then faces a losing trade. And while the um, prof profitable trader, they could now argue, did a mistake. He made a mistake not taking the signal. Um, and this is usually wrong because he didn't take a signal as given in his book of rules, let's say for his trading, um, he still made money by not losing money. While the guy who um, relied on, on, on his rules 
yeah, well, he, he did make a mistake. Everything was fine. So no, no need to worry. But still, the difference is that um, in case of the feelings guy, let's say, the profitable trader, there's at least a smoother equity curve. Probably um, he's, because of that, profitable because relying on his feelings. But now the problem, let's let's have a look here at the problem now um, when it comes to our trading uh, brain in this context and, and why, why this is important to point out. So the decisions we take in our trading are a result of all three. So it's not just that we take um, our trading based on our decisions, which which are are here um, a neocortex based, but it's more um, that the neocortex is overruled here by the other instinctive and emotional parts. So this then naturally leads to something uh, we refer to as biases or heuristics or in irrationality in our decision making like for example loss aversion so like um, hoping that the market will turn around while um, grabbing a quick profit as soon as it presents to you um, and the reason for that is because um, especially the pain when when you have to when you're facing a losing trade is as twice as high as the joy you feel once you once you once you once you gain money or once you make money with a trade um fomo it's the fear of missing out it's the fear of missing missing something so how many people of you have looked at the bitcoin chart recently and just thought well probably now it's the time because I have the feeling that the market has to run up um, from here even further. And so far I haven't made any money with trading Bitcoin or crypto in this context, but um, yeah, probably now is the time. It's the fear of, of missing something, the fear of, 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 of missing out. There's also true, even if you're positioned in a trade, um, how many times did you did you sit uh, sit in front of the screen, uh, the market was moving in a direction, everything was cool. And then, then you started to really think of like, I, I have a clear target on the upside, but really do I want to take profits here or probably take out this level? Because there's so much further potential if the market moves beyond that level and probably... And then the market reaches this take profit level, which you took out, turns around, and you end up, well, probably breaking even on the trade if, if everything goes, goes uh, the right way. Um, most of the time, it, it, you end up losing money because uh, then you start to hope that the market will at least reach your um, um, initial take profit level once again, which most of the time does not happen. And then the market not just drops to your entry point, but also probably hitting your stop if you have one. So... This is then the fear of missing out part in this context. And then, then this is where the um, limbic, in this case, or especially the limbic part, but also the repelling part are taking over and overrule your, your uh, neocortex here and the decisions which you took here by taking the trade. And um, this brings us, before we now come, let me just hear... I just let it um, um, that way. I will share uh, the link in the description box of the web webinar, respectively, Unfortunately, I haven't prepared it. So probably, um, Anna, if you're there, could you please share the link to this book? Um, I think it's um, um, you're just thinking fast and slow, and then you will get uh, the book immediately. So I, unfortunately, I haven't um, um, prepared the link. Before we start, I just have to check one little um, point here in my, at my part. And uh, let me just see. So that's important information. I need this information. In fact, I need one because um, as I already pointed out, uh, 3.8 million. Um, it's for, for, this is something which is really important. And let me, let me just get you, get you through this. Um, so what I do now is um, I have an Excel file. I, I go through here and I um, have my, my details for the plug trade, which I already went through in my mind. Um, and at the end, what I usually do is I write together, I write together a checklist I went through to 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 get a so-called playbook on the trade, and uh, um, and to 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 be capable of of then um, going through the trade once again, which is also very interesting because our brain can um, differentiate between uh, having a real trade or just a um, 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 uh, yeah, a, a fantasy trade, let's call it. So I plan to take the real trade, but still I, I learn something, but I le learn even more if I go in depth over the trade. And now you might wonder, is that really true? Well, just imagine you're sitting uh, in front of your um, um, screen, or not screen, but in front of your television um, and, and watching a horror film. Have you ever wondered why you have 
feel you fear you you want to run away or you, there's there's some kind of stress and adrenaline uh, taking over the reason for that is because your brain can't really differentiate between reality and you watching a film right now and this is the same when it comes to trading why for example running, having a trading journal is so important in your trading um but now let me just um um here go go back to go back to the um presentation which i have here so <clears throat> So now, uh, this is the best book on trading, international bestseller, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, from Daniel Kahneman, uh, Nobel Prize winner, make long thing short, best trading book out there. If you're interested in trading, getting better, understanding why you do what you do, um, you have to read this book. And this is especially true for traders um, who want to know why they do, why they behave in certain ways. If you have ever wondered, you sat in front of a trading screen and just wondered, why did I just take the profit too early? Why did I feel so much pain um, holding the position and seeing it running into the stop? Could have taken out the stop and the market would have turned around sh shortly after. Um, this book explains why. And the great thing about this is it's not just trading related, but it's, um, um, it's, it's, it's with examples from the daily life. You will understand plenty of other stuff currently taking place in, the, in, this, in this world. Um, I'm not sure where you now watch this film, but um, here in Germany, for example, still the pandemic is a topic, coronavirus. Everyone is, um, everyone is getting emotional. It's like, I mean, we're in an environment where emotions play a very important role. Um, right now. And politicians know that. And they play with these emotions because they know about our tendency to behave differently, irrational in an environment where we have emotions having a bigger impact on us. And then we have, um, 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 we have plays like framing, for example, taking place. Once you see certain pictures and in, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the news and the, at the end of the day, well, you're, you're more likely to, I don't know, take the vaccine or um, stay at home or what, do whatever you want. This is a, this is a mind, mind game, if you want, what's currently taking place. And it's perfectly illustrated within that book. That's one of the reasons why for me and a very good friend of mine, uh, this whole situation right now is, um, <laughs> it's boring. It's boring. We, we are sometimes um, um, chatting with each other um, and just laughing about the whole situation and, and just wondering why everyone is now going crazy and behaving the way, um, um, or why they, why they wonder that they behave in a certain way. Well, it's because it's human. It's just human. And this is so even more important when you have to take decisions and then, um, how can I say that? Um, um, uncertain environment in which we usually find ourselves when looking, when trading the markets that, um, well, yeah, we have to, to, to try to understand that and then start to do something I refer to as inducing rationality. So I understand why I'm doing that. That doesn't mean that I'm not feeling kind of loss aversion, pain once I have a losing trade or something like that, but I can cope with it in a way better um, 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 way just because I know about that and I can induce rationality and I can start deep, take, deep, I'm sorry, take a deep breath and just, um, just say, okay, that's natural. You're a human being. That's one of the reasons why you're currently feeling the way you do. And keep this in mind. And now take a step back, look at the situation in a more objective, less emotional way, and then take it from there. And um, so what I what I just did was I, I already um, showed to you uh, here uh, the, this 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 way of explaining our behavior, uh, the Kahneman way with uh, differentiating between system one and system two. So system one is our um, instinctual brain. This is um, the brain which operates automatically and cannot be turned off. This is like, for example, uh, the, the, the breathing part. So you don't have to think about breathing. It's just, you have to, okay? So it's, 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 it's just automatically happening. And um, there's no sense of so-called voluntary um, control here. And this is, um, Again, the, the reptilian, respectively, the, the limbic part. Now, there's this neocortex part, and this is the system two part. It's the reasoning brain. This is the uh, brain which requires concentration, choice, effort here. And it relies, and this is now the difficult part, it relies on input from system one. Uh, put it differently, system to, to, to have a picture in mind once you think about the system one, system two, is like, Again, system one is the one 
you're using or which is which is which is running all the time and helps you keeping breathing keep breathing and and, and not think about it system two is the one you have to uh, turn on and 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 to use once you uh, want to multiply 156 uh 156 times seven i don't know whatever so you can calculate this will be a quite big number we have some some uh time to to uh, invest here to get the right solution but it's is, this is the way you can you can think, think about this. So if you have to to for example go through a difficult calculation, complex calculation, then this is the moment moment once you once you uh, turn on system two. And um, so, question now is um, what's the solution here? So what what can we do um, here to to come to overcome this this um, how can I say um, um, yeah this not solution did the other one uh, this this problem or this conflict between system one and system two um so it's a we can call this a three-part model um so we already run through this for several times but um, the three-part model here is you plan the trade first as i did now coming back to my my recent example pluck what I do is I plan. I have a clear plan in mind what will happen. So I, I just look over here, just look at uh, the current development. So I could now show you my chart and it's exactly happening what I expected to happen. So there's an overall trend line down. And um, I expected to pop it into this trend line. This is currently happening. Great. And now we see a bounce from there. And now the next question is, can we reclaim WeWap in this, in, in this place? So the volume weighted average price. If we can now stabilize about that, make newer highs, a pull in against WeWap is probably um, a long setup then I want to take. So this is, I plan the trade. Um, and here you can you can you can already see uh, it's about building up a solid plan and methodolo methodolo methodology I'm sorry methodology in advance and then in this case use a simple checklist remember what I just did I mean you you're um here this this was live so what I just did before I went through uh, the bullet points in the slide earlier was I have my checklist and I know which um, 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 components of this checklist are of interest for me. So this is something I have to fill in before the trading day starts. And then I will look, is my checklist fulfilled? It is for both, by the way, Pluck and Disney. Um, and then I take it from here. So these two are, are uh, the, the, the markets I want to look at. The checklist is fulfilled. I have my game plan now. I plan the trade. And um, now I take it from there and then the next step is I trade the plan. So if now my setup then um, presents itself as I expect it to present, still, I want to wait something like 10, 15, 20 minutes probably after the open. So we are still within that, that time slot here. And I have no reason now to, to hurry up and, and, and to take a trade or something like that. I have everything set, everything's prepared. And now I wait. This is the next point. I want to make sure that, that it presents itself. Now I want to wait until 15, 20 minutes have passed. And I look at the chart, look at how the situation presents itself. And then I execute on my plan if the setup occurs as I planned within my plan. Um, so this is, this is something I will do hopefully flawlessly. And then um, if you want, it's like risk management and in real time. It's about staying in the game. That's, that's all it is about. It's I have my plan and now I have to see that I trade um, with an according size so that it's not too much. I, I will risk here. And then I, I have to, to, to trade the plan and not just enter the trade, but also manage it accordingly. So based on what targets do I re look for, um, where do I set my initial stop and so on and so forth. And um, so this is now... The, the, what, what we usually focus on when we look at, for example, something like live trading events or something you, you've probably followed, um, what you do is you look at the second part. You, you see people then sitting there in front of their screens and trade their plans. Uh, and by the way, you can already spot, as, at least once you're very experienced and, and once you're doing this for quite a while, you can see um, who is likely successful and who isn't. Because someone who's trading a plan is really all the time knowing what he's doing. You can really see that 
his eyes, his focus, his, his behavior in general, his way he's talking about the trade, for example, and, and what he plans to do. If someone starts to like, oh, I'm not really sure, blah, 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 blah. This, this is usually a moment when I say, well, this guy's not prepared. And this is not professional because professional traders, profitable traders are prepared for every trade. And there is no question about that. And this is exactly where now the interesting part comes into play because plan the trade and then the last part, the three, the third part here, review and tweak. These are probably the most important aspects of profitability, long-term profitability in your trading. About trading the plan, this is the most boring part of all. Even though many people um, who are new to the, the matter of trading um, um, just want to, to, to see action. I want to see markets moving. I want to see people entering the market. But this is not what profitability and trading is about. The profitability is before trading takes place and what happens afterwards and what you do out of the result and then how you review your performance, respectively, how you identify problems and how you make the necessary changes. This is where, where, where profitability comes from. Like long thing short, this is where profitability really happens. And this is usually the part when most of the people are just yeah well what what do you usually do sometimes it's um it's, it's an event which with very short-term trading so especially scalping and so on and so forth if you have a live trading happening here and someone is, is trading its plan right in front of you but gives you then some insights on his um review and how he plans to be better next time take better decisions what trading is about this is usually then the part when most of the um, um, um viewers are just exiting the event I, it happened several times it was fascinating it's fascinating to see but it's also um something which is completely normal because most of the people think the performance is done within the second step based on my personal experience and all the discussions and and, and experiences i made together with other professional profitable traders i can say it's the third and especially the first part, it's the preparation and it's the review and tweak part where the performance comes from and where your overall positive development as a trader results from. People are just focusing here on the second part are likely not to be successful in the long run because they're not drawing any conclusions out of what they just did. And um, yeah, so the next thing, in fact, is a four part model, even though this one is um, self-explaining, it's like you repeat this, trade in, trade out every trade over and over again and over and over again and over and over again and over and over again. And once then it becomes a routine, you go through this and then the target is, and this is why you do this over and over again, you want to turn it into a habit. So if you follow this three-part model here over and over again, the process will become automatic. So as you may have seen now, I'm in a webinar and I take only two numbers and I have to take these numbers and write them down in my Excel file because um, these are, they are dynamic, let's say. So they change. And so I, I have to take them before the opening happens. But um, in this context, obviously you have seen that this process seems to be really automatic right now for me. It's like, I write down the numbers and then take it from there. For me, it's 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 already a habit. It's, it's something which takes place every day and um, where I try to get better over time and more and more, but it's just small changes I make um, in an overall profitable way to turn my routine here into a habit. And um, again, this is then bringing us something. Um, there's a there's, there's a model, the, the ways of learning. I'm not really sure once we um, if if we if we ever went through this already in the past. Um, it's on um, uh, the, the 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 steps of learning we can call this. So at the first step, you're unconsciously incompetent. So this is the classic so-called Dunning-Kruger environment. You don't know that you don't know. And <laughs> that being said, you think you're the greatest. So because you don't know that you do not know anything. That's one of the reasons why many people out there, it's also something which is explained in this book, by the way, um, from, from Kahneman, um, why many people think that they are great um, um, car drivers. So everyone ask me, I would say, yes, well, I'm I'm a good car driver. All in all, I'm very, well, the funny thing is I don't even have a car. So how can I get better in driving a car um, if I don't own a car, if I don't drive every day and try to get better or try to improve as a car driver, however that might look like. So, but still, if you ask me, I'd say, yeah, well, probably I'm a good car driver. Same is true for everyone um, you ask 
Uh, do you think you're a good trader, especially those who are unconsciously incompetent? Do you think you're a good trader? Well, sure, sure. I mean, that's not a difficult game, right? You buy low, you sell high. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but why, why should that be of, of, of uh, um, um, any difficulty for me? Well, right. And this is exactly the thing. So you have unconsciously incompetence and you're consciously incompetent. This is the moment once you realize, okay, trading is a little more difficult, more than buying low, selling high. Once you start to read books, once you start to attend webinars, seminars, and try to, to, to get better. The next step is then consciously competence. And the last, and this is the, 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 the um, state you want to reach, is um, unconsciously competence. This is like it's in your blood. You just execute based on your overall routine. It's a habit. And now the question which comes to mind is, how do I get there? It's through repetition. It's through Oh, doing it over and over again. This is how you how you um, how you turn a routine into a habit here. And uh, what's very interesting is I've now I've taken some thoughts from another book I highly recommend, um, which which I will show at the end um, um, here of this slide. It's from Charles Duhigg. It's the Power of Habit. But I just want to present you um, some some thoughts from this book already and give you some some thoughts on, on how you can use this in your trading. Um, he, what he does is um, he identifies three parts within this book. So the first is the cue. It's the circumstance which triggers an action. In my case, it's a, a, a time. It's, it's like it's 2 p.m. German time, 3.30. Then um, we, have, we have U.S. market opening, 2 p.m., rings the bell and tells me, oh, now I have to focus on these steps. And then I go through my list. Um, so this is the, the trigger event. Then I have the routine. It's the action I take in this context, like writing down certain variables. So to have a chance to then see whether um, these fulfill my criteria to take a trade. And then um, there's the reward, the reason why that we perform the action. Um, and, and the reward after some, some um, long time now is not getting a cookie or something like that. No, it's just like feeling completely in the zone. So I'm sitting here and have no trouble to talk to you in a very cool, straight away way and be completely relaxed. This is, this is what I get from my great present, uh, preparation in this context. And then, um, then yeah, well, you can, you can understand why I take this over and over again, because this is something which is um, showing a positive result in the long run for me. Well, this routine becomes a habit. I feel horrible if I don't do this. So yesterday, for example, um, we had a bank holiday here in Germany and uh, people were looking at me and just wondering, hey, why, why are you still, uh, why, why do you work today? Well, first of all, I love the market. So I, I, I would look at the markets um, even um, if I, if I, um, I, I, it doesn't matter. It, it's, it doesn't matter if it's a bank holiday or not. And second, uh, it's because it makes me feel better. It, it's just, it's like, um, um, it's, it's the reward of feeling better, just feeling good. And, and this is something, once you, once you reach this state, you will see how obviously in this context, then, because you can easily take this from trading and put this at other um, um, areas of your life, why this makes you an overall better person. Why trading is so much more than making money. Um, so, and now once you establish such a habit, um, the resulting um, um, out of a certain routine, it's difficult, not impossible to change it, which is then closing the cycle. Why you have to take demo trading serious and to not play around here. Just imagine your habit is, or your routine is taking a trade, calculating the risk after you do this. Once you start out as a demo trader, just one simple example. So you're not calculating the risk, not having a stop. Well, plays out. Idea is a great idea. Makes sense. So I take the trade. And then you probably see a positive result. Getting lucky. Three, four, five, six trades in a row. Winners. Well, I, I just didn't make any money on my obviously great ideas and, and my read on the market. So you open a life account and you continue with this bad routine and this bad habit in this context, because it became already a habit by not placing a stop. If you do this in a demo account, you'll likely do this in the life environment too. And you turn this routine already in a habit. Now, what becomes here, and, and we know that this can be changed, and this will be explained here in this great read on this topic, the power of habit. Um, we already know that we can 
um, 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 change that. We, we can change habits. For example, um, how to, to end our um, um, smoking, <laughs> smoking career, yeah? How, how to end smoking, for example. Some people end smoking by, um, yeah, eating a cookie or eating chocolate. <laughs> Some of them uh, pay a high price for that and, uh, well, after some time are massively overweight. The reason for that is because they now found um, um, another, another um, um, they, they, found, they, they found a reward. They found a reward um, here, which is eating a cookie or which is eating chocolate here um, and not getting the, the smoke anymore. Um, getting with with um, um, taking a breath on a, a cigarette here, for example. So you can see that that, that this is obviously po possible, but and this is the thing, it's very difficult. So this is then bringing us back to demo trading. Why you should take it seriously? You have to take it seriously because it will be so so difficult to change these habits in your life trading. And this is one of the reasons why once you start out as a trader and you start, and this is a great way to start, start with a demo account, why you have to take it seriously right from the start. And um, so that brings us already here to the summary of uh, today's, today's webinar. So trading is mainly about making the right decisions. This is what we found out. And to make better decisions in our trading, we should focus on the process, not on the results. By the way, um, um, Pluck, I'm just checking out here, is not behaving as I expected it to behave. This is very interesting because so far we did not reclaim WeWeb. This is, this is a very interesting um, um, take here. Let me just check another chart. Disney is more interesting technical wise. This is more interesting um, because we, we, we saw already bearish opening drive and now trading below WeWeb. So this is probably, um, Let's see. So it's always good to have to have two stocks here in this context. Um, our brain consists of three parts. It's reptilian, limbic, and the neocortex. And you can, by the way, and so this is also, I mean, some of you probably, and I wonder why, why I make this um, um, such, a, such a topic here, um, how I behave right now and how I look at the markets. Um, still, I, I, as you can see, I have a plan and I know how to execute on the plan. I have a clear idea of what I want to do. It's not something, oh, I want to click here. I think this is a great buying opportunity or this is a good selling uh, opportunity. Or what. No, I have a clear plan. I, I know what I want to see based on the input I already received. And based on that, I know take my decisions respectively. I already took the decision to go short if this and that happens, to go long if this and that happens. If then, if then. It's a very, very simple way. And you can already see how effective it is. I can talk to you in a very straight way, but still um, be laser sharp and, and focused on what I want to see and what I want to execute on then. And um, so this brings us here um, um, to, to, to this bullet point to some extent, because decisions are a result of all three with the neocortex being overruled by the other instinctive and emotional parts, leading to biases, heuristics, and irrationality in our decision-making, like loss aversion and the fear of missing out. This is probably something which is now playing a role because I now see, okay, 20 minutes into the day, now it's time to probably to not miss out anything on, on the trades. But um, this is, this is um, something I, I still can control. And if you can control this, then then problems start to rise in your trading. You start to get emotional and, and getting emotional is usually if you do not know how to handle these emotions and especially if these negative emotions arise, something to, um, um, uh, to, to, um, yeah, to attack. And here the solution comes into play. So use a three-part model to minimize the conflicts between system one and system two in our trading. And uh, so that means you plan the trade, you trade the plan, you re <laughs> review and tweak and then you repeat. And um, this brings us already to the yeah nearly third part here. I, I just checked and I um, did a small mistake. So I had to change something in, in advance here, but let me just go here to this slide first and now uh, do something different. So um, what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna show you, let me just see, oh gosh, one second. I have to do it that way. So what we want to do is I want to here share with you the next webinar, also with me, by the way, next Wednesday um, on uh, the, let me just check, uh, 20th. Yes, it's the 20th. No, 19th. 19th. It's the 19th of, 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 of February. Um, you can register for this webinar. We will talk about 
uh, artificial intelligence here by going to admirals.com and the slash education slash webinars tab. And there you can see, this is currently running, the serious paper um, one. Here's how to invest in artificial intelligence, AI. It's the 19th of May, same time. So uh, at um, um, 2 p.m. London taking place. Um, till then, I highly recommend checking out the Start the Trading Day webinar with Marcus together, my colleague, um, for, for um, uh, a good start into the day. Make this probably part of your daily routine and turn this into a habit and then take your trading from there. I think it's a good, good, very good starting point. And um, so now let me switch back here to this slide. Um, so this is taking place then, 19th of May, Wednesday uh, at 2 p.m. London. Here are the contact details from Admirals and here is the risk disclaimer. So that's it from my end. All the best, happy trading. Which I look forward to next Wednesday to the um, special, to the hot topic webinar on uh, artificial intelligence. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you soon.